Hey everyone, sorry for the complete silence. These past few months have been pretty hard on me. Uh, I had summer classes earlier that I had to take, and then right after that I had to have some minor surgery done. As a result, I didn't really have the time to make any videos, so I am really sorry about that. I am done with all that stuff now though, so videos should be coming out again, hopefully. I'm not sure given how much my schedule tends to shift. But in any case, today's video is going to be a bit light, I think. I hope. I'm just going to be explaining how exactly damage is calculated in Genshin Impact, because apparently that's something that some people don't actually know, and frankly I didn't fully understand it until I looked into it. But uh, that's all I got, so let's get started. If you were to go on the wiki, you would be able to find the damage formulas pretty easily. It's just on the wiki. However, it is split into two distinct parts. If you haven't watched any of my DPS videos before, this information may be new to you, so I'll explain how both halves of the damage is calculated. The first half of the total damage formula is calculating outgoing damage. This is the pure damage your character will do if an enemy had no resistances or defense values, among other things. This value is always higher than the true damage you will do to an enemy. The way this value is calculated is pretty easy. All you do is take your character's attack stat and multiply it against the talent modifier and 1 plus damage bonus percent. I want to stress that the formula specifically states damage bonus percent and not elemental damage bonus percent. For example, let's say that you have a character that has 50% power damage and is also running 4-piece Gladiator's Finale for that 35% normal attack damage bonus. Instead of multiplying that character's damage by 1.5, then 1.35, the damage is actually only multiplied by 1.85. But how much is this difference in damage anyways? Well, let's have a typical endgame DPS build with roughly 2,000 attack. If the talent modifier is a modest 300%, like on a burst, with multiplicative damage bonuses, the outgoing damage is equal to 12,150. However, with the actual additive damage bonuses, the actual outgoing damage is equal to 11,100. The difference between these two values is only about 9%, but remember, this is only half the full damage equation. The other side of damage equations is the damage received equation. There are two different distinct variables that are part of the damage received equation, defense and resistance. To calculate defense, we just take the base defense stat of the character, multiply it by 1 plus defense bonus percent, and then adding in any flat defense bonuses. This is pretty easy, you can just go into your character stat page and it'll list it right there. But the more important thing you should be asking yourself is, how much damage reduction do I get with how much defense? Well, the simple answer is that damage received is actually fluid. It's not a static X amount of defense reduces an X amount of damage. Instead, the damage reduction formula utilizes both the character's defense stat as well as the attacker's level. The exact formula is damage reduction equals character defense divided by their defense plus 5 times the attacker's level plus 500. Against a level 100 enemy, it would take 1000 defense in order to have the damage taken by an enemy attack. For each level an enemy has, the amount of defense it takes to have that is simply 5 extra defense. Keep in mind though that this function has a negative second derivative which means that for each point of defense, the next point of defense will confer a lower additive amount of damage reduction. Now I did a little bit of theory crafting, and I figured that the highest possible damage reduction possible in the game is actually around 85%. This is assuming the maximum possible defense against a level 1 enemy, or at least what I assume is maximum possible defense, I might have forgotten a food item or two. But that's enough theorizing, let's get back to the hard math. Now defense is calculated pretty easily but the formula shown is different for enemies because enemies don't have unique defense values for each enemy type, like a Hillitrol and an Abyss Mage aren't going to have inherently different defense values. Instead, each enemy has a defense equal to 5 times their level plus 500. So if the Hillitrol and Abyss Mage are both level 10, they're both going to have a defense of 550. If we substitute this into the defense equation, or damage reduction equation, we get the enemy's damage reduction equal to the sum of their level and 100 divided by the sum of their level, the character level, and 200. Therefore, damage dealt to an enemy in regards to damage reduction is completely and solely dependent on the two individual's levels. This also means that the higher the level, the less the level difference actually matters. For example, the damage reduction between a level 100 enemy and a level 80 character is only 52.63%, while the damage reduction between a level 40 enemy and a level 20 character is slightly higher at 53.85%. It's very slight, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Now, those who follow the leaks will know that a certain character is going to be released that has a 60% defense spread on their 4th constellation. 
So, just how powerful is this constellation? After all, it is a fourth constellation. At the far end, we have a level 90 character and level 100 enemies, which have a defense of 1000 and a damage reduction of 51.28%. Factoring in that 60% defense reduction, the enemy defense easily just goes down to 400, and therefore a damage reduction of 29.6%. This means that the damage being dealt is 73% higher across the board. So yes, all you whales, getting C4 for this character will absolutely make them far, far stronger. Which pretty much justifies getting C4, albeit it's kind of a boring constellation. The second part, but much simpler variable for the damage received equation, is resistance. Each enemy has their own resistance value. If the element of the attack matches the resistance element, the damage of the attack is multiplied by 1 minus the resistance percentage. Or at least that's how it is in most games. However, resistance has this strange property in Genjin Impact in that it's actually a piecewise function. For resistance values lower than 0, the formula for true resistance is written as 1 minus resistance percentage divided by 2. For resistance values between 0 and 75%, the formula is written as 1 minus resistance percentage. And finally, for resistance values over 75%, the formula is written as 1 divided by 4 times resistance percentage plus 1. This means that if you decrease an enemy's resistance value below 0, say to a negative 10%, you're actually only going to have 5% more damage since the value is halved to get you the true resistance multiplier. This is assuming the enemy starts at 0 resistance, of course. At the same time, if your character has a resistance value at 80%, they're actually only resisting 76.2%. Now let's put everything together. Let's use the outgoing damage values calculated earlier of 12,150 damage and 11,100 damage, with the former being the outgoing damage formula if it was multiplicative rather than the latter's accurate additive method. If we assume a standard resistance value of 10% and assuming that the character is level 90 fighting a level 100 enemy, as is the standard for Abyss Floor 12, if damage is calculated multiplicatively, the 12,150 damage is reduced to only 5,327.3 damage. If damage is calculated additively, the 11,100 damage is reduced to 4,866.9 damage. The resulting difference is only 460.4 damage. But remember, since all the values here are actually being multiplied, like it's just straight multiplication, it's still only a 9% difference. But this is, of course, only assuming two damage bonus sources. For some characters, like Xiao, for say, it's possible to have more than four sources of damage bonus affecting a single attack. It can come from things like their weapon, artifacts, passives, constellations. There's a lot of things that can affect it. So. The more damage bonuses there are, the larger the difference will be between the wrong multiplicative damage bonus system and the proper, correct, additive damage bonus percent system. But that's pretty much it for this very, very simple rundown on how damage is actually calculated in Genjin Impact. I hope you enjoyed this video or otherwise learned something from it. If you did, why not consider subscribing? I know I've been gone for some time, but I should be back to making videos. Should be. So why not be ready to be notified whenever I happen to post? I mean, if you don't like math at all, then I'm not really sure why you're watching this video. But ignoring that, we're almost there to 1,000 subscribers, which is, as I'm sure many of you know, probably the first major milestone of any YouTuber. And if it's not, it is to me. But that's enough shilling for today. Thanks for watching.